one time, this is not a drill. Please do not be the chick that contacts your new man's ex. Don't do it. Don't be the ex that contacts your ex new chick. Please. These men will lie to you about their experiences with their ex in a heartbeat. You never know what happened in their situation. <laughs> he will have you out here hating the chick that's cool as hell. Especially if he has a baby with her. And let's keep it a buck here. Most of our exes will lie their way through a paper bag, correct? It's really difficult to get honesty out of a man. So if you know this, why in the world would you trust what he has to say about the women he used to formerly date? And they lie to most of the insecure chicks with the lowest self-esteem because they know you need male validation so bad because that's the only thing that'll make you feel good about yourself. Oh, a real player can pick up on that. I just wrote a blog about my baby daddy's new girlfriend. This bald hair girl that reached out to me. I was like, no, don't reach out to me because I'll tell you what he really using you for. I know the real him. He let me know. <laughs> oh, he told me. Oh, he let me know his history. Forget what he did to me. Let's talk about what he did to all of the other chicks. We have a whole last child together. He done played with my son life. You really want to have a conversation with me? You really want to throw your little rinky dink relationship in my face? Girl, bye. Every dad be daddy in America is telling a new chick that they baby mama is crazy. She has a mental illness. I'm on the internet dressed like Chiquita Banana. Evidently, I'm with the shits. If I'm as crazy as he said I was, you might want to hide. I'm going to show right up to your doorstep with a tick and shit. If you're going to reach out to your new man's baby mama or ex-girlfriend, please come in peace. I would suggest you don't contact her at all, but if you must, don't be stupid. You better be pumping her for information. These men pacify you low energy chicks the easiest. These men will tell you anything to make sure that your legs spread wide or open. They tell y'all anything because they know you gullible enough to believe it. Never trust a man that talk negative about his ex. Never trust a man that talk negative about his ex. All of us have been some dude's ex, so we know. They be like, oh, he taking care of my kids, but he ain't taking care of yours. And that sound right to you? <laughs> Let's circle back to the legs opening thing I shared with you earlier. Men will play stepdaddy to any chick who is still giving it up. And honestly, I don't know how you giving it up to somebody who has erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, and a penis the size of a baby carrot. Chicks over here fighting for a man that's bald at the top on some George Jefferson shit. And I'm supposed to be mad because he with you now, girl, bye. Ladies, stop squaring up on each other over these men, especially these dusties, these uneducated broke ones. Telling me he a supervisor when he really just the main janitor in the building that he work at. Like I'm supposed to be like, like I'm supposed to be impressed. Y'all, please just don't do it because you don't know what was happening before you came around. Play your position, and your position is to be a dummy for this dude, not to harass his exes. I told my therapist that my ex's new girlfriend hit me up. She said, they can both go to hell. <laughs> so we always hear about how women can only be feminine if men create an environment for us to be that way. So basically, we have situational femininity. And the only time we as women display masculinity is when we experience discomfort. And to me, that's a toxic message because that implies that being masculine is a negative thing. Or is it only negative if a woman displays it? Because there are things that people classify as masculine that women do, which are actually just things that women do. It is femininity. For example, I like money. I like making a lot of money. But men consider that to be a masculine thing. I'm sorry, but making your own money, that's a part of femininity. Because a part of femininity is self-care. And a part of self-care is making sure that your finances are in order. I say that all the time. I think there's a level of toxic masculinity. But I also think that there are a lot of men out there who don't even know what masculinity means to them. So it's difficult for them to even create an environment for themselves, let alone a comfortable there one There is for such a woman. thing as a soft woman with tough skin. See, we the type of women that don't listen to rumors and gossip. We wouldn't be caught dead whispering something negative to one chick about another. We understand that those type of low energy conversations are distractions from the type of women we want to be. Ladies of leisure. Being a lady of leisure isn't just about you chilling and draining men for their money, not having a job. Part of femininity is participating in self-care. And a part of self-care is making sure that your finances are in order. So we work smart. We find ways to have multiple sources of income without having to work two and three jobs. We invest our money. 
We start businesses. We don't use our social media platforms to drag another woman. We're not trolling. We also understand the concept of relationships with other females. We understand camaraderie and loyalty to one another. It's never a catty situation with us and our other female friends. There's a sisterhood there. There's a code there. So when you see women online who are pushing this narrative and part of their narrative is doing something terrible to another woman or even another man, using men for money, lying about another chick, displaying a level of jealousy and bitterness, always having something negative to say, that's not the type of woman that you want to be. And of course, we all go through stages of life where we feel inadequate, but we never try to find our happiness at another woman's expense. So whether or not you are a wife, a girlfriend, a side chick, a baby mama, whoever you are at this current stage in your life, there is another woman, another lady of leisure that will understand where you are in your life because she's in no position to judge you as a woman. We have all made mistakes. We all have a growth process. So wherever you are in your stage, in life make sure you have a couple of ladies of leisure around you yeah you can have your own version of big sister Selmo but if you're looking for some guidance you can always come here and talk to me we're here to give you guidance we're here to help you with your life don't be ashamed to reach out to somebody everybody got a lesson that they could teach you but be very selective about who you listen to because some of these women might make you more bitter than you thought There's a you lot of people be. out there that's trying to seek the truth about things and it makes sense to go out there and get your knowledge and get your clarity but you have to do that before you jump to conclusions about a person. A lot of times we just assume a person is exactly who we think they are. When really you need to understand that your perspective of reality comes from your own personal experiences and upbringing. It can be extremely hard to not be judgmental of another person. I always factor in what kind of relationship a person has with themselves before I get upset with them for jumping out of pocket. When somebody is treating you in a certain type of way that makes you feel uncomfortable, you always have to factor in what kind of relationship that they have with themselves because that's the reflection of their behavior. It's not a statement or definition of how much value you have as a person. And a lot of people think if someone has an opinion about them, then that validates who they are as a person, whether it's positive or negative. If people don't like it, if you're being yourself, The worst fuck thing them. a man could do to a woman is tell her that he loves her when he doesn't and also have the behavior to match until one day, like a switch, he turns that behavior off. My heart was so broken that for two years after my son's father broke up with me, I didn't date anybody. Because I feel like anybody that I dated, it felt like I was cheating on him. I don't know why it felt like that. Like I felt guilty every time I would even attempt to try to be with another man. For two years, I felt like that. And it could have been the fact that I just had his baby. So I was just kind of connected to him in that way. Of course, it's been five years now and I'm in no rush. I don't want to take out on a new man, something that happened to me in my previous relationship. But something that I've learned during my healing process is that love is not something that's earned. Love is something that's given to you by someone who has the capability of showing you that type of love. A lot of people try to do what they can, humanly possible, to try to earn love from someone or to make someone feel something or force something that's not supposed to be there. So my suggestion to ladies who have ever had their heart broken by someone is to remember that sometimes it ain't even got nothing to do with you. You just happen to make a poor choice in person. You gotta ask yourself, like really, what made you make that poor choice? It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you don't deserve anybody. It just means you made a poor choice in person and you chose someone that didn't have the capability to love you and you loved them so much, you was trying to get love out of them that was not there. Your energy levels are medicated by your environment. There are some places that just have negative energy and some people that just have negative energy and it doesn't matter where you go, that's the state of the environment that they are in. And so if you wanna change your life, if you wanna improve, if you wanna do something better, you have to take yourself out of an old way of doing things or an old situation that's locking you down, ball and chain. No matter what you're going through, I want you to remember that God is putting your name in the ear of someone who's gonna change your life for the good. And even if it feels like things are going bad right now, this too shall pass, I promise you that. This is not coming from a Christian's perspective or a Bible thumper, cause you know, I'm far from that. I ain't nowhere near perfect. 
But I can tell you that anytime I was in a dark place, God always sent me someone to pull me out. 